so we are in tropical moist forest. It rained a bit last night, so all of the vegetation on the ground is pretty wet and decaying. There's a good, good decaying forest smell. And we're surrounded by some trees about 20 meters high. Palms are everywhere. And we've got a swarm of army ants just ahead of us. Initially, we saw them all climbing down this log in one direction. But now if you look, they're all fanning out across the forest floor here. So we have maybe like five meters wide, just a carpet of ants. And they're moving pretty quickly this way, I think. They probably only started raiding within the past half hour, but they're starting to fan out and start their, their daily foraging. I describe it as like a carpet of ants, like hundreds of thousands of them, just inspecting every single little crack and crevice looking for bugs. This is a very dense grouping of ants right here. And they're at my feet. <laughs> Don't move. So if something stays still, oftentimes they'll go around it, but once that spider like kind of tries to move off, then everyone attacks at once, once they clue in on a, on a prey item. If you listen really closely, you can actually hear the ants crawling. It's like a t -t 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 -t. And then we can hear the birds starting to come in too. We're surrounded by a good amount of ant following birds that will typically seek out army ants. Here specifically, Ekaton Bricelli, but some other army ants as well. And they're looking for the swarms so that they can prey on the arthropods that the army ants are chasing. You can hear some bicolored ant birds. I think I see an oscillated ant bird coming in over there too. Some gray headed tanagers higher up in the canopy. And that's what we often use to find the ants as we're keying into the birds. Oh yeah, we have a bird foraging right here. It's like a horror movie for the bugs, I would say. Because they're running from the ants, and like right when they think they're getting away, like a wood creeper just gets them. It's like the terror maximum, I think, for the poor bichos. Because casi prácticamente no hay forma de escapar una vez que te agarran. Uno ve cuando ya hay dos, tres hormigas encima de algún insecto y ya no hay forma de escapar, ya, ya no hay nada que hacer. Entonces yo creo que debe ser algo muy terrorífico para los insectos y algunas lagartijas también. I think keystone species can be an overused concept, but in this ecosystem, I think it does really apply to ants. They are biomass is pretty small, but they have such a huge impact on the ecosystem. So many species rely on them for foraging. I think in the neotropics, over 12% of bird species have been seen foraging at swarms. So that's over 450 species relying on this resource that the ants are providing. You actually see a lot of flies. They parasitize on some of the insects that are trying to escape. There are sometimes butterflies that come. I think that they specialize on bird poop and so they'll kind of hang out. We also see fish even if the ants are swarming right by a river. Lizards sometimes too you'll see at the swarm feeding. Sometimes you'll also see lizards getting eaten at the swarm so it <laughs> can go either way. So for my research I'm looking at the roles that different species are playing in these communities and also how they share resources when they're at the swarm. Up to 60 birds have been seen at an ant swarm at a single time, which is really incredible. And so you have to wonder, how are they all able to be in such a small space? And so we think that maybe they're dividing space up. So some might be using, you know, the lower down areas. Other birds like wood creepers might be higher up. Also the food that they eat. Maybe some of them are specializing on the little tiny spiders. Some might be specializing on, you know, big crickets and then also competition. So because they're so busy foraging, we're able to get really close and they are not bothered by us at all. Our work at the Swarm has two main components. We do point counts. So for that, we're spending five minutes recording every bird that we detect by sight and sound. And then we intersperse that with behavioral observations. So that's 10 minutes of just looking at birds and we have a recorder that we talk into. We're speaking basically to ourselves for two hours. By colored ant bird, 0.2 meters off the ground. Sally Pound, success, same length as its bill. 
and interactions is another big thing we collect data on. And so if one bird is chasing another one or displacing. An oscillated just displaced a bicolored. Kind of anywhere that there's food. They're like, get out of here, I want it. This is where it gets exciting. <laughs> the most dominant bird is the oscillated ant bird. It basically nobody messes with it and it'll often displace other birds. Mi pregunta de investigación trata de abordar cómo surgen las interacciones entre las aves y las hormigas. Y en mi caso estoy tratando de hacer un experimento, tratando de evaluar cuáles son los roles de esas especies. Voy al campo muy temprano, antes de que las aves se levanten. Eh, normalmente cuando voy al bosque hago unos experimentos los cuales consisten en colocar un speaker y reproducir y simular una comunidad de aves. Eh, como por ejemplo, mira, en este momento está respondiendo un Ruby Wood Creeper, una dendrocinclomocro, está acá. Se ha demostrado que hay aves que están espiando a las aves que siguen las hormigas. Si las otras aves escuchan una ave que todo el tiempo está con las hormigas, ellas pueden entender esa señal como que ahí hay comida, ahí hay un recurso. Entonces ellas van y buscan eso. Rosa es una chica que tiene muchas habilidades. Una de sus mejores habilidades es su facilidad para aprender cosas nuevas. Como que cada uno para los dos es una aventura nueva. Las hormigas tienen ese sistema con el biwak, que es este como nido que está hecho de las propias hormigas y que se mueve y en las tardes, noches, tenemos que salir a revisar de nuevo las hormigas. Y a veces las hormigas se mueven a lugares difíciles o se demora mucho o uno no las encuentra bien. Uf. <risa> Finalmente probamos el waterproof del celular en el río, pero es parte de lo que puede pasar como en terreno o en la noche. Sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's really challenging. You come across really big snakes, lots of biting things, and some nights you're just kind of bushwhacking through. But sometimes it's amazing, like, you know, you're seeing howler monkeys every day. The birds are spectacular. The ants can be good and bad, but they are so interesting. I think we're always coming up with new questions. Another really cool thing about this project is that it's a learning opportunity for technicians and undergraduates. They're getting the opportunity to get research skills, work in a really cool system, but they're also answering some really important questions that we just kind of assume we know the answers to. También como los sistemas tropicales son muy distintos a lo que yo estaba acostumbrado, entonces también desde las aves, el clima, las hormigas, eh, la vida diaria incluso es distinto. Ver cómo funcionan los sistemas tropicales de primera mano cuando uno nunca ha estado y viene a estos lugares también es como muy como impactante ver también just reinforce this idea that's integral in ecology, that everything is connected. Nothing really exists on its own. Lo que pasa es que la biodiversidad se está extinguiendo a unas tasas alarmantes hoy en día. Esos personajes que son muy importantes en el bosque mantienen la estructura de, de la comunidad de las aves, mantienen los servicios ecosistémicos. Entonces, si entendemos cómo surge y cómo se mantiene una interacción, creo que es más posible como conservar todo lo que sucede en el bosque. That's kind of getting at the underlying question of like what's supporting a biodiverse system like this and what's allowing it to be maintained and if you're losing players which does happen are there cascading effects on the rest of the community. Bueno, a mí en realidad me encanta mucho mi investigación. La pasión que siento es la única razón que me despierta temprano para poder ir al bosque como como poder encontrar cosas nuevas cada día. We're really lucky to be able to, to work here and to, to study the species here and hopefully give back in turn by getting other people excited about the system and also by contributing to our knowledge of what might be threatening it. <laughs>